Sarah or Sarah is a matriarch in the Hebrew Bible, who was the wife of Abraham and the mother of Isaac. She was also Abraham's sister or his half-sister. The Hebrew name Sarah can be translated as noblewoman. Topic: <laughs> Historicity. In the early and middle 20th century, leading archaeologists such as William F. Albright and biblical scholars such as Albrecht Alt believed that the patriarchs and matriarchs were either real individuals or believable composites of people who lived in the patriarchal age, the second millennium BCE. But, in the 1970s, new arguments concerning Israel's past and the biblical texts challenged these views. These arguments can be found in Thomas L. Thompson's The Historicity of the Patriarchal Narratives, 1974, and John Van Cedar's Abraham in History and Tradition. 1975. Thompson, a literary scholar, based his argument on archaeology and ancient texts. His thesis centered on the lack of compelling evidence that the patriarchs lived in the 2nd millennium BCE, and noted how certain biblical texts reflected 1st millennium conditions and concerns. Van Cedars examined the patriarchal stories and argued that their names, social milieu, and messages strongly suggested that they were Iron Age creations. By the beginning of the 21st century, archaeologists had given up hope of recovering any context that would make the patriarchs and matriarchs credible historical figures. In the Hebrew Bible In the biblical narrative, Sarah is the wife of Abraham. In two places in the narrative he says Sarah is his sister Genesis chapter 12 verse 10 through 13 to 1, in the encounter with Pharaoh, and Genesis chapter 20, in the encounter with Abimelech. In the second, he says that Sarah is the daughter of his father, but not his mother, she was originally called Sarai, a dialectal variant of Sarah. In the narrative of the covenant of circumcision in Genesis chapter 17, during which Yahweh promises Abram that he and Sarai will have a son, Abram is renamed as Abraham and Sarai is renamed as Sarah. There are folk etymologies that explain their old and new names. <laughs> Departure from Ur Terah, with Abram as he was then called, Sarai and Lot, departed for Canaan, but stopped in a place named Haran, where Terah remained until he died at the age of 205. The Lord had told Abram to leave his country and his father's house for a land that he would show him, promising to make of him a great nation, bless him, make his name great, bless those who blessed him, and curse him that curses him. Following God's command, Abram took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and the wealth and persons that they had acquired, and traveled to Shechem in Canaan. Abram was 75 at this time. <laughs> Pharaoh's harem There was a severe famine in the land of Canaan, so Abram and Lot and their households traveled south to Egypt. On the journey to Egypt, Abram instructed Sarai to identify herself only as his sister, fearing that the Egyptians would kill him in order to take his wife, saying, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife, then they will kill me but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. When brought before Pharaoh, Sarai said that Abram was her brother, and the king thereupon took her into his palace and bestowed upon the latter many presents and marks of distinction. It is possible that Sarai acquired her Egyptian handmaid Hagar during this stay. However, God afflicted Pharaoh's household with great plagues. Pharaoh then realized that Sarai was Abram's wife and demanded that they leave Egypt immediately. <laughs> Hagar and Ishmael After having lived in Canaan for ten years and still childless, Sarai suggested that Abram have a child with her Egyptian handmaid Hagar, to which he agreed. This resulted in tension between Sarai and Hagar, and Sarai complained to her husband that the handmaid no longer respected her. At one point, Hagar fled from her mistress but returned after angels met her. She gave birth to Abram's son Ishmael when Abram was 86 years old. Isaac. In Genesis chapter 17 when Abram was 99 years old, God declared his new name, Abraham, a father of many nations, and gave him the covenant of circumcision. God gave Sarai the new name, Sarah, 
and blessed her. Abraham was given assurance that Sarah would have a son. Not long afterwards, Abraham and Sarah were visited by three men. One of the visitors told Abraham that upon his return next year, Sarah would have a son. While at the tent entrance, Sarah overheard what was said, and she laughed to herself about the prospect of having a child at their ages. The visitor inquired of Abraham why Sarah laughed at the idea of bearing a child, for her age was as nothing to God. Sarah soon became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham, at the very time which had been spoken. The patriarch, then a hundred years old, named the child, Isaac, Hebrew Yichak, laughter, and circumcised him when he was eight days old. For Sarah, the thought of giving birth and nursing a child, at such an old age, also brought her much laughter, as she declared, God had made me to laugh, so that all that here will laugh with me. Abraham held a great feast on the day when Isaac was to be weaned. It was during this banquet that Sarah happened upon the then teenaged Ishmael mocking and was so disturbed that she requested that both he and Hagar be removed from their company. Abraham was initially distressed by this but relented when told by God to do as his wife had asked. Topic. Abimelech After being visited by the three men, Abraham and Sarah settled between Kadesh and Shur in the land of the Philistines. While he was living in Gerar, Abraham again claimed that Sarah was his sister. King Abimelech subsequently had her brought to him. Later, God came to Abimelech in a dream and declared that taking her would result in death because she was a married woman. Abimelech, who had not laid hands on her, inquired if he would also slay a righteous nation, especially since Abraham had claimed that he and Sarah were siblings. In response, God told Abimelech that he did indeed have a blameless heart and that was why he continued to exist. However, if he did not return Sarah to Abraham, God would surely destroy Abimelech and his entire household. Abimelech was informed that Abraham was a prophet who would pray for him. Early next morning, Abimelech informed his servants of his dream and approached Abraham inquiring as to why he had brought such great guilt upon his kingdom. Abraham replied that he thought there was no fear of God in that place, and that they might kill him for his wife. Then Abraham defended what he had said as not being a lie at all. And yet indeed she is my sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. Abimelech returned Sarah to Abraham, and gave him gifts of sheep, oxen, and servants, and invited him to settle wherever he pleased in Abimelech's lands. Further, Abimelech gave Abraham a thousand pieces of silver to serve as Sarah's vindication before all. Abraham then prayed for Abimelech and his household, since God had stricken the women with infertility because of the taking of Sarah. Topic. Death. Sarah dies at the age of 127, and Abraham buys a piece of land with a cave near Hebron for a very large fee from Ephron the Hittite in which to bury her, which is the first land owned by the Israelites in Canaan according to the biblical narrative. The place became known as the Cave of the Patriarchs. Topic. Later Hebrew Bible references Sarah is mentioned alongside Abraham in Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. Topic. Family tree Topic. In rabbinic literature The Talmud identifies Sarai with Iska, daughter of Abraham's deceased brother Haran, so that in this Sarah turns out to be the niece of Abraham and the sister of Lot and Milcah. Rashi on Genesis chapter 20 verse 12 she is indeed my sister, my father's daughter. And the daughter of one's father from a different mother is permitted to a son of Noah, i.e., a non-Jew, for there is no halachic relationship with regard to forbidden marriages through paternity for non-Jews. In order to bear out his words he answered him Avimelech thus. And if you will say, by way of objection, is it not true that she was the daughter of his brother Sanhedrin 58b, and not his father? The answer is that the children of children are like one's own children Yevamos 62b. In his comments to Exodus chapter 18 verse 1, Rashi explains that young children call their father's father, father. And Sarah is thus considered the daughter of Terah, Abraham's father, for she was the daughter of Haran, another son of Terah. The 5th century rabbinic midrash Genesis Rabbah dedicates a large amount of attention to Sarah in particular. 
Not only are a relatively large number of drashot dedicated to the matriarch, but she is repeatedly depicted as a model of personal and religious excellence. This is marked break from the biblical and second temple literature in which she plays a far more ancillary role. Topic: <laughs> Pharaoh's harem. When brought before Pharaoh, Sarah said that Abram was her brother, and the king thereupon bestowed upon the latter many presents and marks of distinction. As a token of his love for Sarai the king deeded his entire property to her, and gave her the land of Goshen as her hereditary possession, for this reason the Israelites subsequently lived in that land. Sarai prayed to God to deliver her from the king, and he thereupon sent an angel, who struck Pharaoh whenever he attempted to touch her. Pharaoh was so astonished at these blows that he spoke kindly to Sarai, who confessed that she was Abraham's wife. The king then ceased to annoy her. According to another version, Pharaoh persisted in annoying her after she had told him that she was a married woman, thereupon the angel struck him so violently that he became ill, and was thereby prevented from continuing to trouble her. According to one tradition it was when Pharaoh saw these miracles wrought in Sarai's behalf that he gave her his daughter Hagar as slave, saying, It is better that my daughter should be a slave in the house of such a woman than mistress in another house. Abimelech acted likewise. Sarah is the sister of Abram by another mother and wife of Abram as described in the Hebrew Bible the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 15, God changes her name to Sarah princess, a woman of high rank, as part of the covenant with El Shaddai after Hagar bears Abram his first-born son Ishmael. Topic. Relations with Hagar Sarai treated Hagar well, and induced women who came to visit her to visit Hagar also. Hagar, when pregnant by Abraham, began to act superciliously toward Sarai, provoking the latter to treat her harshly, to impose heavy work upon her, and even to strike her. Some believe Sarai was originally destined to reach the age of 175 years, but 48 years of this span of life were taken away from her because she complained of Abraham, blaming him as though he was the cause that Hagar no longer respected her. Sarah was sterile, but a miracle was granted to her after her name was changed from Sarai to Sarah. According to one myth, when her fertility had been restored and she had given birth to Isaac, the people would not believe in the miracle, saying that the patriarch and his wife had adopted a foundling and pretended that it was their own son. Abraham thereupon invited all the notabilities to a banquet on the day when Isaac was to be weaned. Sarah invited the women, also, who brought their infants with them, and on this occasion she gave milk from her breasts to all the strange children, thus convincing the guests of the miracle. <laughs> death Legends connect Sarah's death with the attempted sacrifice of Isaac, however, there are two versions of the story. According to one, Samael came to her and said, Your old husband seized the boy and sacrificed him. The boy wailed and wept, but he could not escape from his father. Sarah began to cry bitterly, and ultimately died of her grief. According to the other legend, Satan came to Sarah disguised as an old man, and told her that Isaac had been sacrificed. Believing it to be true, she cried bitterly, but soon comforted herself with the thought that the sacrifice had been offered at the command of God. She started from Beersheba to Hebron, asking everyone she met if he knew in which direction Abraham had gone. Then Satan came again in human shape and told her that it was not true that Isaac had been sacrificed, but that he was living and would soon return with his father. Sarah, on hearing this, died of joy at Hebron. Abraham and Isaac returned to their home at Beersheba, and, not finding Sarah there, went to Hebron, where they discovered her dead. According to the Genesis Rabbah, during Sarah's lifetime her house was always hospitably open, the dough was miraculously increased, a light burned from Friday evening to Saturday evening, and a pillar of cloud rested upon the entrance to her tent. <laughs> New Testament references The first epistle of Peter praises Sarah for obeying her husband. She is praised for her faith in the Hebrews. Hall of Faith passage alongside a number of other Old Testament figures. Other New Testament references to Sarah are in Romans and Galatians. In Galatians chapter 4, she and Hagar are used as an allegory of the Old and New Covenants. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. 
His son by the slave woman was born in the ordinary way, but his son by the free woman was born as the result of a promise. These things may be taken figuratively, for the women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves, this is Hagar. Now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem, because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Islam Sarah Arabic, Sert Sarah, the wife of the patriarch and Islamic prophet Abraham and the mother of the prophet Isaac, is an honored woman in the Islamic faith. In Islam, she is the cousin of Abraham rather than sister due to Haran being her father who was a cousin to Terah. She lived with Abraham throughout her life and, although she was barren, God promised her the birth of a prophetic son, Isaac. Abraham, however, prayed constantly to God for a child. Sarah, being barren, subsequently gave him her Egyptian handmaiden, Hajar Hagar, to wed as his second wife. Hagar bore Ismail Ishmael, who too would become a prophet of God like his father. God messengers announced to Abraham that barren Sarah would give birth to Abraham's second son, Isaac, who would also be a prophet of the Lord. Although the Quran does not mention Sarah by name, it mentions the annunciation of the birth of Isaac. The Quran mentions that Sarah laughed when the angels gave her the glad tidings of Isaac. Topic: <tomb>, Tomb of Sarah. Sarah is believed to be buried in the cave of the patriarchs, known by Muslims as the Sanctuary of Abraham. The compound, located in the ancient city of Hebron, is the second holiest site for Jews after the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and is also venerated by Christians and Muslims, both of whom have traditions which maintain that the site is the burial place of three biblical couples, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and Leah. <laughs> Sister of Abraham There are three stories in Genesis where a patriarch identifies his wife as his sister. Scholars debate the relationship among these, with some saying that the account of the encounter of Abraham and Sarah with Pharaoh in Genesis chapters 12 to 13 is the oldest, while the stories of Abraham and Sarah encounter King Abimelech in Genesis chapter 20, and of Isaac and Rebekah's encounter with a different King Abimelech in Genesis chapter 26, are interpretations of that one, generated to explain it or deal with other matters of concern. It is not clear which of the stories is actually older, or what the intent of the editors of the Bible may have been, according to Emanuel Feldman 1965, basing his argument on Albright's interpretation of the archaeology of Nuzu, a wife could legally be awarded the title, sister, and that this was the most sacred form of marriage, and hence Abraham and Isaac referred to their wives as, sisters, for this reason. Most archaeologists however dispute that view, instead arguing the opposite, that sisters in the region were often awarded the title, wife, in order to give them much greater status in society. Savina Tubal's book Sarah the Priestess posits that while Sarah was indeed both Abram's wife and sister, there was no incest taboo because she was a half-sister by a different mother. Topic. Contemporary works and analysis Sarah has been featured in several novels, and she is the central character in Sarah by Orson Scott Card in the Women of Genesis series, Sarai, a novel by Jill Eileen Smith, and Sarah, a novel by Merrick Halter. In the Christian fiction novel Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers, the protagonist, called Angel, throughout the duration of the story, is barren. At the end of the book, she reveals that her birth name is Sarah. To her husband, who takes the revelation as a promise from God that they will one day be able to have children. In the 1994 movie Abraham, Sarah is portrayed by Barbara Hershey. Sarah is also a subject discussed in nonfiction books. In Twelve Extraordinary Women by Pastor John F. MacArthur, her life and story is analyzed along with that of Eve, Rahab, Ruth, Hannah, the Virgin Mary, Anna the Prophetess, the Samaritan Woman at the Well, Mary of Bethany, Martha, Mary Magdalene, and Lydia of Thyatira. Sarah appears in Slightly Bad Girls of the Bible, Flawed Women Loved by a Flawless God by Liz Curtis Higgs alongside several other biblical women. 
Topic Notes Topic References Topic External Links Rubinstein, Nakama, The Three Faces of Sarah Habad. Org.